Hello Linux fans, welcome to Quest Byte News Episode 2. It is September 29th, 2016. Just a reminder, at the end of this Byte of News, we will have a Linux Quest viewer question, and so I encourage your participation there. Part of my um, my hope is that we can just enhance the Linux community. That's what it's all about, helping one another in Linux. That's part of what makes it fun. So stay tuned for that Linux Quest viewer question at the end of the news bite. So let's jump into some news. We'll start out with a little bit of news from some company called Google. I think they have something to do with tech. I'm just not quite sure what. But apparently they're introducing a mystery Linux distro. It's an open source Fuchsia OS, and at first I thought, Google, what are you up to? You've got uh, Chrome OS, and now you've introduced Android apps from the Google Play Store into Chrome OS. What are you up to? But if you go on and you check it out, it's really, um, it's going to be an OS, it appears, for embedded systems. It's built on Magenta. Uh, using a medium-sized microkernel that itself is based on a project called Little Kernel. So uh, this is going to be some form of embedded OS. Now Google, of course, being the huge company that they are, this could be a little pet project of theirs, and this could be the last bit of news we hear about it, but it's kind of a hobbyist or whatever if you're into this kind of thing. It's kind of fun to follow along. My guess is they have developed a drone pizza oven for delivery and they're going to focus in on the pizza market with Google's own pizza brand and they needed an embedded OS in order to control all of that. Okay, take it for what it's worth. All right, so let's jump from OS over to desktop environment. And we've got news here that you've probably already heard about, but it's big news and I just want to cover it briefly. So GNOME 3.22, I'm currently running the GNOME desktop and I'm kind of coming into my own with GNOME. Uh, the more I use it, the more I like it kind of thing. There's still a few times where I feel like, nah, this isn't for me. But anyway, I'm looking forward to these enhancements to uh, the GNOME desktop. So one of the big ones is flat pack integration. And so this provides cross distribution between or four applications. Um, and really it's a way to bundle everything together um, that would be needed for the application in a very secure manner and make it easy to access and easy to install so it's more secure it's easier to use you know everything about it's good so I'm really looking forward to uh, the flat pack integration the other big one that for me I'm kind of I guess you would say um, nitpicky when it comes to the file manager and so I'm really excited to see the new feature which allows for um, compression and extraction built in so you can uh, you know zip a file or extract a file uh, right from the control inside of the file manager that means you're no longer reliant on a third-party application so I think that's going to be just you know one other function that will um, just really improve and enhance file management and especially if you've come from Windows uh, that's something that you're used to having built in already so I applaud that decision and they have also added a feature which is really not something that I use often but I can certainly see the benefit behind it and that's the ability to rename multiple files they've also introduced a photo sharing feature and I believe there's going to be a few limitations on that in the beginning but I'm sure that that will be enhanced over time now they've also redesigned the keyboard settings and they have also included or enhanced the support for the Wayland Display Server. So excited to see that progression there with uh, Wayland Display Server. You're starting to see a lot of activity there with other uh, desktops as well. Now, this is not all about looks and all about flash. They've got something in here for developers as well. So they've introduced a stable release series that'll make it easier for application developers to use the enhancements that were introduced in the 3X series to begin with. So they, they're going to have transparent access to the Flatpak portals, so it's going to allow them to sandbox applications uh, you know, for development. So uh, check this out. Again, this is something to watch and keep your eye on. Looking forward to it. It's kind of kept my interest with the uh, GNOME desktop knowing that this is around the corner. My hope is, is that here in the next week or so we'll see um, a distribution that will release with this updated 3.22.
uh, desktop. All right, so we're going to move from there on to another popular desktop environment, and that is the Budgie desktop environment from Solus OS. Now, Solus uh, OS is one of those distributions that's certainly in my top 10 list. It's something that I keep my eye on as far as their progress, their advancements. Um, it's an excellent distribution if you haven't tried it. Uh, I have a video review on this as well that uh, actually points out a few of the changes in the Budgie 10.2.7 release. So some of this may be old news for you, but uh, nevertheless, it's, uh, it's very welcome changes. And so one of those changes is through the applets. So their panel applets used to use a mix of left and right clicks, which was somewhat confusing. It's hard to remember. What does right do? What does left do? <coughs> Excuse me. They've done away with the right click and focused on left click left click for those actions and I just think that will improve the overall user experience. The other thing they've done is they have now enforced a 1 to 1.1 aspect ratio for the task list icons. So the spacing there I think is going to be much better. It will prevent you from accidentally clicking maybe the icon beside the icon you meant to click. So um, anytime there's that UI enhancement, it's a good thing. And they've also improved the icon scaling to go along with that. Next up on the list of changes is the keyboard layout indicator. So if you use multiple keyboard layouts, they now provide a mouse-driven method for switching between your various layouts, as well as the super plus space shortcut key. Now, the big thing about the Budgie desktop within Solus that you recognize pretty quickly is the Raven sidebar control. Now, if you watch the review video I have there, uh, the update that I had right before I did the video was applied, which gave you this icon to open or close the Raven sidebar. Now, along with that um, change, they have also included uh, keyboard commands such as Super A, which will launch you right into the applets, or Super N, which will now launch you into the notifications. So that is certainly welcome. Now here's one of those things that I thought was there before, but if it's new, apparently it wasn't. And that is the user indicator. So now if you click on the user indicator, you get access to log out suspend all the shutdown you know various shutdown log out features and again I thought that was there before but apparently it's new and it wasn't so happy to see it here now now here's a word that I just I'm gonna say it iconography I'm not gonna say it fast I'm gonna say it slow if I say it fast it'll sound like something else so what they're doing here is they are improving the um, the use of your icon themes and so now you're going to see your icons apply to more games and more common applications and again for the overall UI experience and just look and feel uh, of the desktop environment that will be a nice improvement anytime you can have everything looking as though it's meant to be together that's a good thing and then last but certainly not least and again this is one of those things that I just assumed was there already and apparently it wasn't and that's on-screen displays for the change in brightness or the change in volume level. As you see the icons here, those will pop up onto the desktop just to show you uh, what you're adjusting. So these are all welcome changes and uh, you know again really look forward to keeping my eye on Solus OS and what's going on with the Budgie desktop there. Alright so let's move over to user questions or excuse me viewer questions uh, we'll come down here to and I had this I want to make sure I get the name right so BOT Frank Jr. ask how is the battery life on elementary OS and so what I'll have is at the end of this video you'll have an opportunity to select great good or so-so based on your experience now while I have used elementary OS and again that's in my top 10 list of Linux distributions I haven't spent enough time with it on a laptop to really be uh, accurate in <clears throat> in what I suspect is very good battery life uh, so if you could take a minute to uh, pick your selection here at the end of this video I would appreciate that 
or just go on over to the elementary OS video and you can reply directly to BOT and uh, supply him with your viewpoint on battery life for elementary OS. All right, that's it for Linux Quest Byte news. Thank you for watching and we will check you next time.